Jungle warfare is a new kind of warfare. It tears up textbooks and confounds the experts. It has played and will play a vital part in the Pacific conflict. The Kokoda campaign has been one of the major and notorious battles in Australian history, especially in World War II. Fought between July and November 1942, it was part of the Pacific War in World War II and has been debatedly been one of the major turning points in World War II history. The goal of the Japanese was to capture Port Moresby, following the Kokoda track over the mountains of the Owen Stanley Range. Kokoda campaign was a battle fought from July to November 1942. The battle was fought along the Kokoda track or trail, which ran through 160 kilometers of dense jungle and muddy terrain across the Owen Stanley Range in Papua New Guinea. It was the only pathway that provided direct access to Port Moresby. Papua New Guinea was strategically important to the Japanese and the Allies. Taking it would allow the Japanese to have greater scope to defend the territories it had recently took over. Malaysia, Borneo, and Indonesia. If the Japanese seized Port Moresby, they would have the ability to launch or at least threaten a southward invasion of Australia. There were two main stages of fighting in the campaign. The great push south by the Japanese from 29th of July to 17th September 1942. They would continue to push to Port Moresby. When Port Moresby fell, then Australia would be in their sights. The second stage of fighting would be the reoccupation of the Kokoda track by the Australians from 28th of September to 2nd of November 1942. The Maruba force set off to Kokoda on the 7th of July 1942 and reached Kokoda on the 15th of July 1942. Meanwhile, the Japanese forces captured Gona on the 21st of July 1942 and started advancing towards Kokoda on the 23rd of July. The first notable battle took place at Kokoda on the 29th of July and it ended with the Australians retreating to Geniki then to Isarava. The Battle of Isarava was a key battle for the Kokoda campaign. The Australians were outnumbered. There were about three to four Japanese for one Australian and they lost, continuing their retreat. The Battle of Brigade Hill was Australia's most humiliating defeat and Japan's most decisive victory of the campaign. Despite these losses, the Australians continued to resist the Japanese, fighting in appalling conditions and slowing down the Japanese's advance. The strategy was to withdraw while putting up as much resistance as possible. The Japanese had the goal of Port Moresby in sight, but the Australians resisted them, preventing them from going any further. The Japanese troops were starving, and by late September, only 1,500 troops remained from a force of about 6,000. Half had withdrawn for being sick or wounded, many were missing and there were 1,000 dead. The food supplies were dwindling. However, the Australian force was strengthening. Reinforcements were arriving at Port Moresby and the Australians outnumbered the Japanese. From the position of Irrawarra Ridge, they could see the lights of Port Moresby, but they were in serious trouble. By late September 1942, no supplies were getting to the Japanese troops at Irrawarra. Each soldier had about 150 grams of rice per day, making them starve. On September 1942, the Japanese commander announced the decision made by the Emperor to withdraw. This is the second stage now. By 19 November 1942, heavy artillery forces hit the Japanese up to Imata Ridge's summit. The final phase of the Kokoda campaign lasted from 20th of September when Irobara Ridge was reoccupied to 1st of November when they recaptured Kokoda. The Japanese were thus defeated by the Allied forces. There were many soldiers who fought in the Kokoda campaign. 
and Stan Bissett was one of them. Bissett, who was born on 27th of August 1912 and died on 5th of October 2010, was a military officer who had served in the Second World War. Born in St Kilda, Victoria, Stan had joined the 214th Battalion, joining his older brother Hal, also known as Butch. He was a lieutenant in charge of an intelligence section while Butch was a platoon commander. Both had served in the Middle East before coming back to the Southwest Pacific to defend Australia against the Japanese on the Kokoda Trap. After arriving at Papua New Guinea, they both were sent to relieve the 39th Battalion who were fighting against the Japanese at the Battle of Isarava. During the battle, Stan was wounded by a bullet grazing his eyebrow, but his brother Butch wasn't so lucky. Doc gave him an injection of morphine and had a good look at him and He's got to burst a machine gun fire through his tummy. I saw Stan and Butch together with the doctor. I said, how are things, Stan? He said, oh, Butch is dying. I moved on. But I saw that Stan was visibly upset, as he has been and as or ever will be. We just talked, uh, uh, he was, he was unconscious at times, and other times he was he was good. You know, he knew I was there, and uh, we held each other's hand, and he uh, we talked, you know, quite a few about things from there. <laughs> Mum and Dad, and their great days. He was wounded and died in Stan's arms in 1942, which was buried on the track. There has been a debate on whether the Kokoda campaign has really deserved the historical significance in the South Pacific War, World War II. Professor David Horner and Ashley Ankins questioned whether or not the campaign deserves such iconic status. They pointed to documents from the Japanese High Command that show an invasion of Australia had already been ruled out in March 1942. However, a soldier who actually fought in the war 92-year-old Ben Tonks, so that undoubtedly he and his soldiers were definitely fighting to save Australia. Mr Tongs also said that they were saying this because it was a face-saving exercise. He also questioned when Australian commander Sir Thomas Blamey knew about Japanese plans. We were fighting for Australia. Our friends died for Australia, quote, he said. Australia was in dire straits. We knew that the Japanese intended to invade Australia. Unquote. World renowned best selling author and historian Anthony Beaver said an invasion of Australia was never part of Japanese war plans because it would have needed 10 divisions of troops and a vast fleet. I can understand why the Australian government felt that was the threat because Japanese did appear unstoppable, but it was never part of the plan, unquote. They would have been raiding and bombing, harassing basically, but it wasn't going to go any further than that, unquote. According to Anthony Beaver, the real turning point inevitably came when both Germany and Japan had reached their full extent of advance. They were overextended and everything was going to turn. It happened to coincide in the case of Germany and Japan around October and November of 1942." Quote. Anthony Beaver also said that the Second World War was such a huge conglomeration of different conflicts that it's almost impossible to point to a single battle as a turning point. With this, the Kokoda campaign fits perfectly in this time period. The Kokoda Trail fighting was some of the most desperate and vicious encountered by Australian troops in the Second World War. Although the successful capture of Port Moresby was never going to be 
precursor to an invasion of Australia, victory on the Kokoda Trail did ensure that Allied bases in northern Australia, vital in the coming counter-offensive against the Japanese, would not be seriously threatened by air attack. Approximately 625 Australians were killed along the Kokoda Trail and over 1,600 were wounded. Casualties due to sickness exceeded 4,000. Therefore, we can say that the Kokoda campaign is significant in the means of being an essential part of the turning point. The whole campaign itself just isn't enough to be considered the turning point of history.